What's going on, family? I'm just here to remind you that you can get yourself a copy of my new book, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volume 4 of the Caribbean, by visiting my website, www.ontheshoulders1.com, and help support me as I continue on my mission to make sure that my people have our information, even though, you know, there are many people trying to stop us from learning our history. But hey, we can teach ourselves. And one of the tools we can use is my new book, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volume 4, The Caribbean. Remember, visit my website, www.ontheshoulders1.com to get your copy. And I appreciate your support. Catch Wayo, the last king of the Zulu. During the early 1820s, the great Shaka was king of the Zulu nation who was in conflict against other factions of the Zulu who broke away to begin their own kingdoms. The battles were fierce and many of Shaka's male family members were competing to become king of the Zulu. Mpande was the half-brother of Shaka and the father of Kachweo. At the time, Mpande was a Zulu warrior and soon to be king following the deaths of Shaka and Dingane. Kachweo was born in 1826 in Ishowe Zululand but raised in Ngakavini after Mpande fled Ishowe to preserve his life. In 1828, Shaka was assassinated by his brother Dingan, who then took the power of the Zulu kingdom. Mpande and Ngan would battle in 1840, with Mpande's army being victorious, making Mpande the king of the Zulu. After becoming sole ruler of the Zulu kingdom, Mpande declared Kechweo the heir to the throne. Kechweo was described as a physically intimidating person, standing between 6 foot 6 and 6 foot 8 inches, weighing around 350 pounds. Even though Kechweo was the heir to the throne, his brothers and other family members were now rivaling for his position. In Buyazi, Kechweo's brother was favored by their father while the Zulu lands were experiencing a severe drought. Kechweo was promised to be the successor of his father, but Mbuyazi was being favored by Mpande at this time. Mbuyazi was given a large portion of the land and Mpande was not communicating with Kechweo about his succession. A civil war was already happening among the many factions of the Zulu kingdom. As Mbuyazi and his followers moved into the lands granted to them by Mpande, they were removing a number of Kechweo supporters. So a conflict between the brothers was inevitable. Kechweo and Mbuyazi were engaged in the battle, Mbuyazi being backed by Mpande and others against Kechweo. The final outcome of the battle was Kechweo being the victor and was now a threat to take the throne from his father who supported Mbuyazi. Mpande was able to appeal to Theophilus Shepstone, the British Secretary for Native Affairs for help. Shepstone was able to get Kechweo and his father to agree to terms for the rulership of Zululand. Mpande would remain the king of Zululand and maintain the authority of the king, while Kechweo would have control over Zululand. As time passed, Kechweo would yield more power and influence than his father. Kechweo was adamant about eliminating any threats to his throne. Mpande died in 1872, giving Kechweo the full rulership of Zululand. In 1875, Kechweo and his army were prepared to defend their lands when the Boers began claiming parts of southern Zululand. Kechweo and his army caused the Boers to retreat and rethink their plans of battle. There was another problem and threat to Kechweo's power. This threat was the British Empire. The British annexed the South African Republic in 1877, but were threatened by Kechweo's growing army. The British wanted to colonize Zulu lands without resistance. In 1878, the British gave the Zulu a choice to either give up their lands and sovereignty or be wiped out. Kechweo chose war and this was the beginning of the Anglo-Zulu War of 1879. The Zulu were a formidable opponent for the British. Actually, the British became cocky and underestimated the Zulu despite the Zulu's reputation for being fierce and victorious warriors. The Zulus were able to gain victories over the British, but they lost a decisive battle, the Battle of Ondini. Kechweo was able to escape from the battlegrounds, but he was eventually captured by the British soldiers and imprisoned. In 1882, Kechweo traveled to London to meet the Queen of England, who granted him permission to return to his own land and rule a portion of the land. Kechweo began a rivalry with Zeb Hephu, who was placed in charge of the northern Zulu lands by the British. 
Cachuelo did challenge Zeb Hephu and his army but was defeated and could not regain control of the lands that were now being controlled by the British. Cachuelo died in 1888. Many believe he was poisoned by one of his rivals. We're not clear about how Cachuelo died, but we do know that he is considered to be the last great king of the Zulu. To Cachuelo and the mighty Zulu kingdom, we proudly stand on your shoulders. For more information, make sure you visit my website at www.ontheshoulders1.com. There, you can get your copy of my new book, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volume 4, The Caribbean. Make sure you support me on Patreon at patreon.com backslash O-T-S-O-G. And you can hit the super like button under this video to help support your homeboy. I love y'all. Make sure y'all catch this next video.